I have no idea <laughs> how months work. That is, is what I just learned. It's somewhere between the beginning and the end of the year right now. And we think yeah. that that is an appropriate time to take a look at what's getting the attention right now over on TCG Player. If you go to TCG Player, sort all their products by Magic the Gathering cards, and then sort and view over here by best selling, you can see what's popping off. Jake, right now, numero uno, Ocelot yeah. Pride is the best selling card on the website. Your cheapest listing, 3826, and your cheapest direct listing looks like 48 bucks. Wow. This one's popping, dude. That is a very spicy card, man. There is a it's lot going on for one white mana here. So much going on. Every time you read a line of text, you're like, okay, that's enough. And then it just keeps going. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think that this one is going to stand the test of time. It reads like a card that was designed to find play, not to mm -hmm. be a white one white <clears throat> mythic that's never played. And so right. it didn't pop off at Pro Tour. I think it was present, but not overwhelming. Now you see best selling weeks after Pro Tour going into the last half of the year here. People are wanting those Ocelot prides and you need four. This isn't a commander card. It can kind of be a commander card in some decks, but this is a constructed card, right? From what I've heard, commander is actually starting to want it as well. CDH or just anything. Gained life, created one to, one. Uh, I need to figure it out, but yeah, I, I have seen some commander lists start wanting the card too. It's a lot. It's a lot. And I mean, in a Soul Sisters build, you're popping off mm -hmm. so fast on this dude because you're gaining right. life when it enters. You create the 1-1. One, one. Once you're able to ascend, each token you control that enters the battlefield this turn, you create a token that's a copy, so you grow that much faster. And look, as far as reprintability of this, waiting for this price to die down, I mean, you're basically going to have to wait right now. If you don't want to grab it here on the way up, you're basically just going to have to wait for it to get like powered out and not even be a card that's playable or something or a reprint, which will be I mean, years away, easily years away. Yeah, I mean, the, the card just came out. It's a set that's like still or I guess not in print or is is modern horizons three in print i don't know yeah but it's it's brand new it's brand spanking new yeah. set so absolutely still in print absolutely yeah. still in print um the next band and restricted announcement is at the end of august and um you know this could be pre-hype for that trying to get on a card that's sick minus whatever's the overwhelming meta aka nadu mm -hmm. So right now your Ocelot Prides, if you pulled any of these in MH3 and you don't want them, you're not interested in whatever commander deck you might want this in, or you're not interested in modern, this could be a good one to buy list right now. On its really way good out. one to trade. Yeah. yeah. Tons of trade value right now. Yeah. Nearly, yeah. nearly 40 bucks. You could easily get 40 I mean, bucks in trade value for this. Yeah. For me, I'm looking at this card and I'm just like, oh yeah, that makes sense. I remember when, like, a really good one drop to me was, like, Elite Vanguard, which is, like, a 2-1 Go for Goblin one, Guide. Right? Goblin Guide was the most broken one drop in yeah. my mind. Yeah, it's like, whoa, we got a 2-2 two -two that comes in, and all you have to do is, like, they can reveal the top card, and if it's a land, they get to put it onto the battlefield. Oh, yeah, That's dude. nothing. Well, and I'm right? also a person who played four... I registered four Birds of Paradise, 7th edition Birds of Paradise for a tournament, yeah. you know, in Odyssey block. I've 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 played what I thought was the most possible powerful one drop of all time. <laughs> yeah. At various points in my life. Now we're here at Ocelot Pride. We didn't even talk about Ragavan. Jake, did you get the one ring, did you dude. get a copy of this one? I did. I've got one. I've got my so one. So I traded. Same. I traded actually Travis oh, for traded. a copy yeah. of the basic one ring and an Orcish Bowmasters. I picked up like the most important cards that came out of that set and then i recently traded that one ring version and like a pile of other cards like 150 dollars worth of other stuff for the poster version yeah which i just got which i am very stoked on um right now this is at, the cheapest like, one yeah what is the poster one at when i acquired it it was around like 250 so 
I traded my my one copy of the One Ring because I wanted the rarest version. So that's kind of where I'm at. Like, but I'm happy I have the card because the card is a staple and it's just massive. Three oh four. What did you say it's at? Three oh four TCG non foil. <clears throat> Five forty foil. But that's and that's the Jesus. point, right? This card is becoming a three of four of in modern decks. This is we've we've gone Yeah. We're not we're past this is becoming a staple. This is a staple. We are at, we are at problem crossroads already with this card. This was printed last year. Common sense says that's not going to be reprinted minimum until like 25 26. Minimum. The card is stupid good. But it's then, stupid good. Jake, when you start talking about a reprint of this card, you can't just talk about that. You have to have the how conversation. Yeah. So we'll see. There's got to be a yeah. plan. I would assume you don't make a busted card. I mean, wait two years Dude. and ban it. Let it go nuts for two years and then ban it. So that they get into the Marvel license. It's not even just a card that commander players need one of, right? You have people that are playing modern that yes. are going to want it forever. That's what I'm saying. That's what yeah. I'm saying. And they need multiple copies. They yeah. need up to four. Easily up yeah. to four. Min, min three for the people that want to play it because they'll have two in the main and one in the side. Or it'll just be people that are degenerate that just want to main deck four of them. Right. Because that's not bad either. I mean, it's, it's a crazy card. It is I, a crazy card. I really like Brad's suggestion here. And I've seen this on the internet. And it's a cool take that the one ring becomes the first restricted card in modern that we've reached a point where we need to restrict <clears throat> cards in modern yeah so that we can print more powerful cards or leave more powerful cards unbanned thoughts and honestly what's wrong with that right because thematically it. it makes sense right there's only one one ring there, you can't there argue. wasn't like an, a moment in lord of the rings where frodo was like don't worry sam i need to get rid of this ring give me the other one ring and then this one can be sacrificed right Gollum jumps um, up. Now I remember that famous scene in Lord of the Rings where yeah. Gollum jumps up and bites off Frodo's finger that has the ring on it and yeah. he stumbles a little bit and it starts to fall into the lava but he jumps after it and on his yeah. way down as he's caught the ring and he's falling toward the lava he turns around and he looks at Frodo and Frodo pulls a second, third, and fourth <laughs> ring out of his pocket and kind of waves yep. it and smiles mid bleeding out of his ring uh, out of the thing that it was on the iconic line <laughs> is my burden has been lessened my burden has been that. lessened i have three more the one rings you idiot i remember it that's right i love that movie yeah. um i mean it's it was such a twist when you found out that there were four the one rings yeah that was that's my favorite, crazy that was my favorite part that was, look, honestly boromir what a, what boromir's moment, all dude. like i couldn't have one <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just yeah. wanted one. God, it was that is the <laughs> coolest part of Lord of the Rings. I honestly I love the four ring twist. But yeah, um back to reality. We need a problem. Yeah, There's a, we, we have a problem down, here. It makes sense. It's very funny that an iconic card from a different <laughs> IP is such a massive heavy hitter in Magic the Gathering. It's honestly, a, I mean the one ring was powerful. That's for sure. Ooh, print Sonic as a as the answer for the one ring. Sonic zips by and grabs it, eats it, poops it. I don't know what he does with the rings. <laughs> Jake, the third best selling card yeah. is Floggy, Titan of Fire's yeah. Fury. Yeah. Man, Floggy. I remember how this low everybody one. was on this card <laughs> when they saw it, dude. Everybody was like, oh cool, worse, worse lightning helix. Moving on. I think it's pronounced like it's like algae. Oh, so it's fla like uh, flag flaggy. <laughs> falgy. Oh, falgy. I like how yeah, I, I like how I the pronunciation of it swaps the A and the L. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah algae. This is a yeah, weird. It's a, it's a weird. It's a Theros thing. They swap the middle. They swap the middle letters. Yeah, and it took off because it was a breakout, right? This was one that people realized. Oh yeah, those titans like Uro and Kroxa. They made another one. We should explore it. And this one is a lightning helix on a body and on the attack on the ETB. What the hell, dude? Yeah, but is that going to be enough? Yes, that's going to be enough. I promise. 
Yeah. Turns out the to six an empty point board, this swing thing, is, yeah, is enough. This thing attacks for nine on an empty board. Yeah, it's enough. It's gross, dude. It's so gross. This one ended up being one of the big shockers. All of those commanders, the Kroxa, the Uro. Walters. These these elder giants are all very, very good. I'm a fan. Ugin's Labyrinth, Jake. We're still riding a little bit of uh, Eldrazi hype here. Mm -hmm. No other real use for this. Was Labyrinth present in the Pro Tour? Yeah, so it's been decided that for Ugin's Labyrinth is the way to go here with Eldrazi Tron. So it's another mythic land that you need four of. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. It's fantastic in the EDH deck, which is still getting a ton of hype. Still rolling. Still selling copies. Still moving. That's the crazy part to me. Remember, these are mm -hmm. the best sellers right now. As we're looking at this. Jake, what's this card? Ah, the one ring. I will say this about the one ring. Yeah. Thank God it was printed a bunch of different times. But, I mean. A bunch of different do? ways. Yeah. Yeah, a bunch of different ways. Ulamog floating Ulamog. around. Ulamog yeah, not card. in the deck. We got Devour of Destiny. We got Promised End. I think it's just a massive commander card. I don't think Modern is playing it. Yeah, no, it's it's Promised End and Devour of Destiny, and that's it. Yeah, its effect isn't what you want. It doesn't have, like, it's just a big, splashy commander card. I can't imagine anything else that wants it. I could even see its price, you know, trending down because it's not wanted in constructed formats look at that yeah yeah that makes sense it's a commander card big old splashy boy nearly 40 percent loss of the price of ulamog in the last month yeah this will recover this will recover people will want this card forever and they yep. will very rarely print it again its ability is so strong. 10 mana isn't even that much. I like it. Yeah, same. Zooming out for a second. That's our top six best-selling mm -hmm. cards right now. Looking at the next six, we've got some does and we've got some interesting ones. Mm -hmm. Orcish Bowmaster. Still yeah. an incredibly CDH playable card. likes it, man. Yeah, I mean, really does. Well, in four ofs in any deck that's black. Just like yeah, Soul Strike every deck right with now. black loves it. <laughs> it's just two cards that came out of that set that are just undeniable. Bowmasters and the One Ring. Got some reserve list here. Mox Diamond, Gaia's Cradle. Still some of the best selling cards. Isn't that crazy to me? That's crazy to you? It's CDH, crazy to me. man. Yeah. Collecting. That Mox Diamond, list. that's like the... That's the reserve list Mox that in my opinion isn't even that great when it's all said and done because of the card disadvantage but in a very sweaty format uh for a very finite card that there are just not enough copies of yeah the the price doesn't surprise me we'll we'll step up toward enward kenway and Ezio and mention you know these are kind of the two best selling assassin's creed cards that are popping out right now um yeah. the commanders you know, people want to play their assassins or their vehicles. Good crossover mm -hmm. of synergies here with Edward Kenway. And then Ezio, if you want a five-color Assassin's Creed, ju just shove all your Assassin's Creed stuff into one deck. That's the one. Ocelot Pride yeah. in the Borderless there. But then these two, Jake. Soul Spike, which we've touched on. But, I mean, the thing is, is there's not much to cover with Soul Spike. It's a free four damage in a format that's got Nadu lurking behind every corner. It yeah, can kill four Nadu damage. Is it any speed. target? Any no, it's target, target creature, creature or, play. or player. Okay. Okay. But, I mean, you're willing to three for one yourself to kill Nadu right now. So, we'll see. I think that people were kind of looking at this card in mono black in modern, even before Nadu came out. Mm -hmm. But, Nadu's the one that kind of put it over the edge. We'll see if it falls back significantly when Nadu gets banned in August, which I'm sure is going to happen. Um, but otherwise, a reprint of this is going to... Oh my god. 
Oh my god, yeah. That's going to be a no one, one wants it. One dollar like, card. No one really wants it. Sure, it's a modern card, but <clears throat> it's like once it is reprinted. Yeah. Um Yeah, forget about it. No way. And then the other uh other I would say most recent breakout Yeah. Sleeper to breakout is the Tamio. People were really high on it at first, and then they were super low on it. And now it's good. Oh, it's evening out. Look at that price. It's not bouncing back right now as much as I thought it was. Because I saw it down here. And then I saw it near and back up. But yeah, people are... You can see people were way higher on it when it came out yeah. of the gate. But it was definitely falling down. Seems to be evening out a little bit. We'll see. Finding the floor, possibly, yeah. A lot of the difficulty... I think that there's going to be one more major shift with MH3 cards. And that's going to happen when Nadu gets banned. Because Nadu really stepped on everything that could have been from that set. You still had some yeah. pop. The energy deck. You know, Boros got a shot in the ass. Eldrazi got a shot in the ass. But Nadu stomped on a lot of possibility. And so hopefully, as that ban becomes a reality... Mm -hmm. We see another shift in these MH3 cards. See some stuff break out. I imagine that out. we will. A Johnny breakout. Uh, that would be nice. Shout out to Fetchlands. Fetchlands are extremely low right now already. Two. So if you're missing any of your Fetchlands that were the uh, original onslaughts that oh. were reprinted in Kanza Tarkir and then just reprinted um, in Modern Horizons 3, there's no better time to be snag a mouse. Oh, Not financial man. advice. Look at that drop. Look at yeah. that drop, dude. Yeah, it's massive. Yep. I think that it's interesting. Those are those are your best selling cards here in the middle of the year. 2024. If you're watching this after the fact, let us know in the comments what you're buying, if you're buying any of these.